please look up believers we have preached the subject of mercy in church and many people have even come out to be candidates of mercy unfortunately very few have received mercy i know it by assessing the results in their lives do you know why because although most people want the fruits and the blessings of mercy most people have compromised through pride they have not come to a state of brokenness i can tell you one thing with god as loving and as wonderful as god is the moment you come to god full of yourself believing he's only an addition to what you already have forget about mercy it is not bible mercy you will get the bible says the sacrifices of god are a broken and a contrite spirit this was what I discovered in my study of the subject of mercy that broke me down. It broke me down in a way you cannot imagine. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Let's read together. It's projected. Ready? Please read. One to read. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken spirit. A broken heart and save it such as be of a did the bible say he saves all no no there is a kind of man that god is looking for to be a recipient of his mercy tonight if you truly want to receive the mercy of god just crying and rolling will not bring mercy you must assume this posture in the spirit that when the mercy of God comes upon individuals and families and businesses and ministries, it is not just searching for sound, it is searching for this spiritual state. Read your Bible in the New Testament. Every time people cried unto God for mercy, for instance, blind Bartimaeus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said what do I do for you that I may receive my sight and he prayed for him brokenness many people have not gotten to this point in their lives where they realize and acknowledge the fact that they are inadequate do you know why because you see please look up there is a state of the fallen man for some reason man as a species is very very stubborn it takes a lot of defeat recycled again and again to bring us to our knees for instance the nation of israel god himself called them a stiff-necked people do you know what that means one who is not malleable proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 it says trust in the lord with all your hearts and then it says lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him as what that's the question acknowledge him as what it is the reason why people of god you would see god reach down to individuals in their lowly estate and begin to lift them with his hand and his jealousy and put them in positions that looks unfair do you know why because what he was looking for he finally found in them whereas there can be other people who are even already privileged by default but that self-pride there are preachers today who have the they may have the backing of God, but they have, they, there is clearly no mercy in their lives. When one plus one equals two in your life, the mercy of God is not at work in your life. Because that is exactly what arithmetic says should be. But when one plus one becomes an answer that only God writes, the mercy of God has added to that result. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting very successful people successful in business 
successful in ministry successful career wise and as God grants me the privilege to sit with them and talk with them usually I want to ask tell me your story and there are certain points lines in those stories I'm looking for I connect the beginning of their lives and I want to know at what point mercy came in some of those who were recipients of that mercy did not even know when mercy came in they only know when brokenness came they will tell you I got to a point where I lost I failed and I cried all through the night aha uh -huh. from that time they will say I found a message from that time they will say I went for a meeting they did not know that from that time it was mercy that took them please listen very careful you can know when you are on a flight of mercy the result will be clear I wish I had the time I would have shown you from Luke 15 from verse 11 the story of the prodigal son theologically speaking this is the greatest expression from uh, the standpoint of parables the greatest expression of God's mercy you know why because it's a very comprehensive parable it shows a family from the beginning the original plan then it shows the rebellion of a young man and it shows the consequences so it starts with a father that had two sons follow the story carefully and it says that the father was a blessed and benevolent man and provided the sons were under his care they were comfortable there was no mention of lack and limitation the bible says one day i'm rushing because of time one day the younger son met his father and said father i am tired of dependence on you you see the problem now i i have come to a point where i think i am smart and i am adult enough i do not need your influence in my life i am tired of giving you the glory behind the results that happened to me it's, it's it's a thing of embarrassment before my friends give me something my portion of the inheritance and let me leave and the father said are you sure he said yes he said go from the time he came out of the influence of his father lack began notice the gradual degradation that happened to that child the bible says he went and met his friends and he began to spend the money on riotous living then the bible says in verse 14 that in the course of time he spent everything is it in your bible and he began to be in want i like the word began meaning it was not his prior experience he began to be in want and he kept going down and down and down until he got to a point where he was feeding with pigs please follow this in your imagination once royalty having access to everything because of one foolish decision that was a communication of rebellion and pride father i do not want your influence in my life I discovered that I am I think I'm an adult enough you see in the realm of the spirit you measure spiritual maturity by your degree of dependence in the physical realm the more matured an adult you are we know you are an adult by your detaching from authorities around your life reverse is the case in the realm of the spirit that the more dependent you are the more mature you are because you have now realized that outside of the help and the mercy of God I cannot amount to much this young boy would be learning a very painful and powerful lesson here's what the Bible says that he got to a point where he came to himself please look for that scripture for us it is within the power of man to come to himself the Bible never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him the Bible never said a demon threatened him do you know let me tell you this please look up you may not believe me but hear this there is a dimension of pain that is a gift let me repeat it again there is a dimension of pain that is a gift pain can be an advisor pain can be a counselor so there are times that when you see people going through certain levels of pain you will want to help them but you see god will prohibit you because god will say i've been working with this man for two years 
I'm, I'm now at the moment where their strength has failed. Allow this pain to culture them into brokenness and repentance. Don't try to help people God is not helping. You may be destroying his program. Is someone learning? Very powerful lesson. It had to take pain to bring this boy to his senses. He came to himself. The pride that came with the availability of resources did not allow him to have a, 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 a time of counseling to think, what am I doing with my life? But now, pain had brought him to that point. Let's listen to his contemplations. He came to himself and said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? Here's what he said. Next verse. I will arise. Hallelujah. Something has happened to that gentleman. I'm praying for you. May this happen for you. Because there are many of you who have in reality taken God out of your life. You replaced him with over dependence on intellect over dependence on business ideas over dependence on human connections i'm not saying those things are wrong but my bible already says trust in the lord with all your heart that is the reason why you see some people when you are clapping for them they roll on the floor because they know that there is a part of this equation you cannot see i will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto him. Listen carefully. Hear the voice of brokenness. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Is someone following? And I am no more worthy to be called your son. This is not condemnation. This is revelation. His true state had now been revealed to him. He says, make me as one of your hired servants and he arose and he came to his father look at the miracle the bible says the gentleman said i will arise and i will go to my father he would have remained there and say it's just a blind thought he would have died there i assure you that hunger was already about to kill him he said i would die with hunger but the bible says indeed he arose notice this the moment he arose and started moving the father too left home and started coming he said draw nigh to me and i will i will not come and meet you in your rot and your situation there you cannot help yourself but acknowledge the fact that you are limited the moment you satisfy the condition of brokenness you are ready for mercy listen do you know why i'm teaching you this many of us here are leaders you must also find this in the people you show mercy to forgiveness is useless until there is brokenness and repentance anybody who is in need of mercy the role that he has to play in receiving that mercy is to be broken first to realize and to acknowledge when you help people who are not broken you endorse their pride when you help people who are not broken, you accelerate their journey to perdition and destruction. Are we together? It is the reason why when we make altar calls, sometimes we ask people to come out. We, it's not to embarrass them. Leaving your seat and defying the shame, leaving your colleagues and your loved ones and coming to stand there is a token, is an expression of your brokenness. Are we together? Unfortunately, these days, there are people who come and stand here and still are not saved. When you look at them, you don't see brokenness. They are even still standing and recording the preacher. All they want is just a, a photo of his, of his picture. While a powerful prayer of salvation is going on. Lord Jesus and the person is just recording. But the only thing he says in that prayer is, Amen. You are not saved, sir. No, sir. Except scripture will be broken. The Bible says if you will confess with your heart. Are we Bible students? The Lord Jesus. And believe. Confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. He says then you are saved. Brokenness. Now let's see what happened. 
the bible says he arose and he came to his father but when he was a great way off his father saw him and had you see our formula again what was the first thing the father had i told you mercy is the fruit of compassion you cannot have and show mercy until it, there is first compassion pity this young man is limited he is frail and the bible says he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him 21 very interesting verse and the son truly said what he said he would say if the son did not say this if verse 21 was not in that scripture we will know he's a hypocrite he said he was going to say it and when he met his father he truly said it father i have sinned against heaven and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called your son next verse but the father said to his servants look at the father this describes the character of god the moment the father found brokenness there was no discussion of the issue again it was over this is the I, I want to show you how mercy works now there is no point discussing the issue what i am looking for i have found ah hallelujah 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 do you know why i'm saying this because you see men will not forget your past men will not forget your yesterday even when you have become paul they will keep reminding you of when you were Saul. jesus died i agree but how long did he die he only died for three days when he was now resurrected they were still talking about the dead jesus like many people will still be talking about your 10 years ago they will say rahab the great grandmother of jesus is it the rahab i used to know but the prodigal son's father showed us the character of god the moment he finds brokenness the end of discussion to that limitation no more discussion he would have said what a stupid boy you are so this is what you have become you could not even leave anything at least the man with one talent even brought back the talent what you didn't bring back anything and then they will beg him and beg him and later he say all right mm -mm, that's not god remember the lord is gracious and compassionate that's why i started by showing you the nature of god listen if you do not understand the nature of god you cannot express that character of god to those who are under you because you see the end of this discussion i'll leave that for tomorrow the moment you receive mercy you must one day be in the position of this father too every one of us in this story will be both the father and the son I, are you getting my discussion some of you for now you are like the son you need to come back but for some of you as leaders you are that father there are people who are long overdue for mercy they have been broken that case has to be over No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Listen, the Bible tells us there were two thieves on the cross. Is that in your Bible? Jesus was in the middle of two thieves. I wish I had time. I would have taught you that the cross is where both good and bad people meet. <laughs> you will think because you are Jesus, the cross will not be there. The cross and the prison are two mysterious places because no matter who you are, you must pass through the prison or the cross. It is not, you don't have a choice to exempt it. You only have a choice to choose whether it's the cross or the prison. These are two mysterious places in life and destiny. They forrun every throne. The prison forruns the throne. And the cross forruns the throne. Joseph, you must pass through the prison to sit as prime minister. Jesus, not even you, will be spared of the cross. Can I tell you this? This is not my message but i just thought to digress for one minute because some of you are right now 
you are in states where you do not even know lord how come the righteous and the unrighteous are in the same condition remember the prison and remember the cross jesus was hanging on that cross and there were two thieves by his side and one was open and he began to shout at jesus in his pride even while on the cross these were thieves so they both stole and the other one was shouting at jesus you can't even save us and then the other one demonstrated brokenness he said mr man this is an innocent man in between us paraphrasing we are victims of our wrongs and jesus looked at him even on the cross he did not ignore brokenness he says today you will be with me this is a both of you today because there is brokenness you will be with me in paradise hallelujah when i learned the mercy of god perpetually this is not self-condemnation but let me tell you the truth every time i go to god in prayer i go to him and i say father there are so many people who depend on this grace and you know if i am left to myself i cannot even help myself talk less helping other people i ask that by your mercy and by your grace you will help this man who is so limited and inadequate that is the kind of prayer god wants to hear and he will come to you and pick you on the wings of eagles and your life will command results and dimensions of possibilities that will dumbfound you and everybody around you but when they add you up you don't equal that answer because the mercy of god is the mystery behind your results please listen to me this is a very powerful message the mercy of god I have seen the mercy of God in my life. I have seen the mercy of God in ministry. When people come and ask me what is the secret, I can only tell them the best that I know, but then leave them with the fact that everything I told you is not the whole answer. There is a part of this answer I don't have the power to give. I will have to direct you like an usher to the one who can show men mercy. I have seen families where the man and the woman are well cultured disciplined parents and all four children became hooligans all four of them have you seen that happen respectfully speaking lawless children you can't say the children were not trained they fasted with the parents they did night vigils and the children still became what they became and yet i have seen children where the child can leave home for two weeks and return back the third week the mother can see the child five times in a year and the child is in that city and one day the child will be moving somewhere and enter into one conference and the power of god will hit that child the next time the child returns he's a well-cultured stable young man on fire and the mother and the parents have no hand in the transformation of that child someone shout mercy I have seen diligent people trusting God to raise money and build and doing their best and the moment they are building they have a problem with maybe some government and they can come and demolish that building and I've seen people who in their innocence someone would just say I like you and I want to help you look let me tell you this you never downplay the power of God's mercy hallelujah even in my own life sincerely and respectfully speaking i will tell you there are times maybe because of my schedules and sometimes i'm not able to see people and minister to them as i would want to and then in the midst of all that crowd you see people who fly in all over the world and they are standing doing their best and i can turn somewhere and you can see a little boy and the mother somewhere someone just held them and say i can help you see apostle and they are standing there and i'm saying my god look at the mercy of god The ability to pardon an offender and the ability to add up for the inadequacies of the other 
everyone seated here and you who uh, is following from television or across the globe we are all in need of god's mercy there are people during this pandemic and all through it was their wealthiest moment they were sitting quietly and fortune just came and met them like an arm robber and changed their lives completely there are others who for decades they had a track record of diligence and in one year they were brought down to nothing someone again shout mercy, mercy. your mind is fighting what you are saying and say remember your skill is there shout mercy again mercy. Let your mind and your spirit know that beyond skill and beyond human connection, ah, except the Lord builds a house. Is it not in your Bible that they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord watches over the city? I will never forget a time, true story, years ago, a woman came to me, PhD. She was applying for a security work at a, um, I, I mean it, jet PhD from a university. Never been employed. I said, what is this? Applying for security. Security, I, I, I think it was an oil and gas firm. Sincerely, I stand before God, I'm telling you this. PhD? may your mercy not leave me oh god may your mercy not leave me may your mercy not leave me the world is too wicked without the mercy of god and for those of you who think god oh, this this does not concern me everything is all right let me tell you this the pandemic should have taught you a lesson i have cried with many people i have have you even politicians have you not seen people who were minding their business and the mercy of God just came and lifted them. I remember somebody who almost plunged to depression when he, he lost election the last uh, time. He invested money, borrowed money, lost election, and he came and met me. He said, the issue is not that I didn't win. The issue is that I pushed too much. Now I'm in trouble. And he was a very good man. Nebuchadnezzar was one king who learned a lesson through his pain. If you have the time and you go home, please read Daniel chapter 4 from verse 34 to 37. This was the repentant prayer of Nebuchadnezzar. He became an animal for seven years. He praised and honored the God who lived forever acknowledging that there was a government above him we're going to pray do not miss tomorrow's session i will share with you one or two more information but for now i want to wrap up by teaching you two blessings among the many there are two major blessings that come to your life when the mercy of god has rested upon you number one is the blessing of healing number two the blessing of provision write it down please matthew chapter 14 from verse 14 to 21 matthew 14 from verse 14 the bible says and jesus went and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them what was the response to that compassion i told you that everything that comes as a response to compassion is called what mercy so healing the sick is the ministry of mercy is someone listening now healing the sick more than the ministry of power is the ministry of mercy 15 we're reading to 21 very quickly and when it was evening his disciples came to him saying this is a desert place and the bible says and the time is now past send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals but jesus said they need not depart give them give ye them to eat remember compassion is still speaking 
and they say unto him we have here five loaves and two fishes he said bring them hither to me 19 and he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and break and gave the disciples and the disciples to the multitudes uh-huh the bible says and they did eat and they were say mercy yes. when you eat and you are filled two things that are important here you must eat and you must be you can eat and yet you are not filled but this one when mercy is what is responsible for your provision you will eat and you will be filled and the bible says they took off fragments you see human beings again as soon as they were filled what did they do with the rest they threw it away the same people who were hungry jesus fed them and they threw the fragments and the disciples had to gather the fragments and it was my shame and poured your love you look beyond me oh. you look beyond me oh. ah. i'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown mercy you have shown mercy let it not be that when you are built houses when your sheep your cattle everything is working well you will say my power the might of my hand has given me this he said but thou shall remember it means you can forget some of you have forgotten the god that took you from nothing to where you are today is someone thanking that god the god that saved you diseases and sicknesses that would have killed you he said if the lord was not by our side now may israel say someone pray someone pray one minute lord i open up my heart first to say thank you and then to cry that you keep me broken take away pride from me everything that has made me full of myself to believe that it is just by my power i repent oh god subconsciously i may have taken your place before men when they clapped for me i did not tell them jesus was the reason behind it someone cry before your maker your grace your grace i'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me are you crying before the god of heaven your grace your grace I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me. There are many of you, the reason why prophecy has not happened in your life is not because the man of God who spoke lied. The posture of brokenness that must give way for the mercy of God to come. You have been delaying the manifestation of prophecy because there is no brokenness a broken and a contrite spirit thou will not despise someone is crying to god please forget about who is by your left and right if you are too big to cry for the grace to be broken then i tell you forget about the mercy of god Mm. Mm. 
he said in my people who are called by my name the first thing is they shall humble themselves they are my people but they will never see my outstretched hand until they humble themselves and pray and seek my face turning from their wicked ways he says then will i hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and heal their land please swallow your pride tonight please swallow your pride tonight i respect your pedigree but like the 20 and 4 elders remove your golden crown and cry before the maker Please pray one more minute. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Cheap victories that you would have received. But because the mercy of God kept coming to your house, kept coming to your business, the mercy of God kept coming to your ministry, kept coming to your job, but it kept returning because it did not find brokenness. Don't let it return again. It came 2015. Pride and arrogance did not allow the mercy of God rest upon you. 2016, 2017, 2018. 2019 2020 2021 here is your chance again win that war of destiny once and for all lord if you don't help my children i don't have the power to help them lord if you don't help my business i don't have the power to help if you don't help me from this addiction i don't have the power to save myself if you don't help me from this financial situation the bills that are on me will destroy me. Thou son of David, here at this conference, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon my children. Have mercy upon the works of my hands. A broken and a contrite spirit, O God, thou wilt not despise. hallelujah listen we're wrapping up i'm going to pray over your request now true story i know a woman who was diagnosed with cancer and they had done everything they knew to do she was afraid of chemotherapy because i think she had read all kinds of things online that it does not guarantee survival and i stand before the god of heaven and i'm telling you this story this woman went out of her way at a point she said according to her she was listening to one of my teachings and she decided to spend a, to have a personal vigil with God not asking for anything just rolling and crying and say Lord I'm not afraid of dying but please if I am going to die please arise for my children this is all I am asking and the Bible, I mean the woman, <laughs> I said the Bible, she cried and cried and slept. And that when she lay down and slept, she just saw that a man entered the room, true story, reached his hand into her and brought out something. Ladies and gentlemen, when that woman got up, that was how that thing started shrinking and disappeared from her body. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. <clears throat> I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on. Some of you, let me tell you the truth. Right now, the situation you have found yourself, it is the mercy of God that you need. Some of you are doing well by yourself. Your major problem is your children. Some of you are not even doing well sincerely. It will take the grace of God. Now, please hear me. I told you that healing and provision it also extends to signs and wonders they are 
they are manifestations of God's mercy. I have a covenant with God. I have read the scripture. I have a covenant of answered prayers with God. I will tell you this by the God of heaven. Please, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, is there anyone? I'd, okay. Go ahead. Please, ushers. Because the next, the next five or so minutes will be a sense. Now you know what mercy is. In case you wrote it down and unbelief made you to remove some things. Let me assure you, let your faith rise. Because God is about to surprise you. We are in the zone of mercy, so let there be no fear. The one who is merciful is also the all-powerful. I'm saying it again. If it means you writing something again, writing for your children. A group of very wealthy real estate people came and they demanded to see me. And I said, what, what is this for? And they came and met me and they said, Apostle, we had a discussion and we came to the conclusion that we are going to have a covenant with God over you that anywhere on earth we build our estate we must build a house for you there this was some years ago it's not something that is recent i said what is the meaning of this what did i do they said this is our agreement with god wanted to look for something that represents the kingdom there anywhere Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I apologize if it sounds like pride or whatever. I cannot tell you how many estates these people have built today across Nigeria and Africa. And every, I've not gone to one of the houses to even check and say, this is my key. They just bring the papers and say, go and drop them. Go and drop them. Except the Lord builds a house. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. A group of business people came and met me and said, Apostle, we agreed that we're going to make you a non-executive board member. So what does that mean? Very big, we're not talking of small little companies. What is my own contribution? And they jokingly said, you represent the presence of God and the ark of God in that business. Okay, so what am I going to be doing? Praying for you? I can pray. I don't need to be any. I can just pray. Say, no, this is our conclusion. And the only thing I can say after that is to God be the glory. Can I tell you, everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But hear me, it takes the mercy of God. The mercy of God. I was living in a particular nation. This was like three, four years ago. I, I was done and there were some American people who came. Uh, they were doing a partnership, a real estate partnership with the the that country and the pastor and the group of business people they just stood i was hurrying up to go and rest and prepare get to the airport and return back to the country and they met us and they said well we are developing properties here and we just want you to know that we have put five properties for you here i said five who are you people what are you doing till today i've not gone there to say this is how my house is A woman who relocated not too long ago to the UK from Ghana just called me and they bring me papers and keys and the photo of a house. It will be like the, maybe the Ikoi or Leki now in Ghana. Magnificent structure. And said, the Lord said, I should give it to you. I'm leaving. I've not gone there. It was my protocol that when I was in Ghana, I said, you should just go and see it. I just know that God bless you is there. Whatever happens to it, just leave it there first. Have you read the scripture that says, when the Lord turn again, the captivity. I'm sorry if, I hope you, you are not misunderstanding what I just told you. Can I tell you, when the mercy of God rests upon your life, you will lay up gold as dust. Believe me when I tell you this. That what somebody is praying for, God will carry it and bring it to you and knock your door. And you will open it and you will see it like a parcel there. I'm saying that because something is about to rest. Be patient. The next two minutes here. I know that you've been praying. You've prepared for this meeting. Please don't waste your moment. Don't be like the man who the king leaned on and said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, must this happen? And he saw it but did not eat of it. 
please in one minute where's the prayer request have you dropped it we are going to pray in one minute I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart father these that have written here arise in your mercy and let this be the last time I will write it as my prayer request please Please make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Take your eyes away from the limitations. Look unto the God of mercy who can visit men and turn their lives around. Someone is praying. Foundations of Sapphire, are you praying? King's Court, are you praying? You are praying this for your family bring your family in this prayer bring your children in this prayer your business your ministry Here, turning lights around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending broken hearts. I worship you. I worship you. We make a miracle walk, promise keep light in the darkness. That is who you are. We call you the way maker, miracle walker. Covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. In the name of Jesus. The son, ah, I sense such an anointing in this place. My God, my God, my God. Do you know what I'm seeing in the spirit? I want you to write it down. I'm just seeing doors opening. Honestly, I stand by the God of heaven. Very strange doors opening. This is what I'm seeing. Some of you, you didn't even expect it. Some of you, is this week that is coming. We are not talking of something that is in the distance. Doors opening. Hear me. I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. 
and an elder tapped me and he said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of jesse is worthy it says and i looked upon the throne and i saw a lamb as though it had been slain having seven eyes and seven horns father i bow my knees to you oh god of my covenant and i declare i speak to you these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever hear me every blessing comes from god through men to men from god through men to men there are times that god says yes but the human vessel who should partner with god for your testimony is not ready let me call them by prophecy anybody whether in lagos in nigeria or across the globe who has been anointed and mandated to partner with prophecy and has not responded to the voice of the spirit right now we compel them to partner with god hear me every door that has been closed over your destiny for a long time because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing doors. I'm still telling you. I'm, I'm seeing. Listen, do you know what a door is? A door is a device that midwives two rooms or two realms. Doors are the provisions that connect seasons. Midwifing one season to the other is a door. And if that door is closed, a season cannot come to an end for another one to open. Let me pray again anybody who is standing at the door and that door that opens you to the next season has refused to open by the power of the holy spirit we open that door now 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 hear me he said go to the place where the roads divide you will see a cold there that no man has ridden upon he said lose it and if they ask you I'm, I'm seeing like i'm seeing like fire just coming on like seven people just help them i just saw that anointing right now right now just help them you don't have to bring them out but help them someone uh, is it's like a chain that is breaking up someone's life right now the bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bands of iron in sunder i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus those chains be broken by the anointing of the holy spirit everything that has tied you and held you bound help that woman please be broken now help that woman please help them please everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen hear me he said when they ask you why are you losing a cold that no one has ridden on it means there are virgin opportunities that no one has touched god kept listen even the owner of the cult has not ridden it that means there are people holding certain things it is not for them they are caretakers but at the command of the king he said release it and if they question you say it is a, a, a triumphant entry you cannot have a triumphant entry walking barefoot therefore i speak over your life anyone who has been made a caretaker over any blessing that should come to you in the name of jesus may they release it for you now
there is a woman here your right leg you've had severe pains just i'm feeling the pain right now as i'm standing just the right side who is that woman the lord wants to set you free now i don't intend to take so much time but i mean i i when i came in here i sense an investment of prayer and preparation i know that people have prayed and prepared believe in miracles so my dear look at me you love jesus what's your name i want to pray for you don't feel embarrassed eh? there is something that god is taking out of your life right now i stretch my hands and i curse every spirit huh i'm seeing limitation in the name of jesus be free right now by the power of the holy spirit what's your name my dear this lady shaking her head leave that for tomorrow who is Gladys what's your name where are you from I have to pray for you I'm not a prophet of doom eh? but I'm looking at you and I'm seeing your hands and feet tied in the spirit this is what I'm seeing you are a sincere lady, but there is no progress, no moving forward. People will promise to help you, and by the next day, they just... Let me prophesy to someone. If there is any embargo on your life that makes people desiring to help you, uh, help this woman, help that... Oh my God, please help her. In the name of Jesus, Abacatos Katibata, help them please. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, right now, I use Abacos Shekatea. Be free now! Be free now. Everything that has tied you that will not let you go forward by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Go forward now. Go forward now. I pray for all of you who are having pains in the name of Jesus. There are two people here. You saw me in your dream. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just listen to what I'm saying first. You saw me in your dream. And in that dream, I was ministering to you. This is, this is something God wants to release you from. I'm going to pray for you right now. Please don't come out at random. Make sure that there's order in the house of God. Let's not come out at random. You don't have to come out. You can stand where you are. I presume that so many of you, because you've listened to the teachings, you, where, wherever you are, but I'm going to pray for you. Someone will shout right now, loud under the anointing. Aha, uh -huh, that's right. Something is happening here. Something, help them. Something is happening here. I'm seeing like angelic ministrations. H help them, please. Angel help them, please. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. I'm seeing angelic ministrations. These are they not ministering spirits. Send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. In the name of Jesus, we release the ministry of angels. We, we release the ministry of angels to families, to homes, to businesses. Help this woman. We release the ministry of angels right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be healing right now. Every part of your limbs, let there be healing right now. I decree and declare if there is anything that is connected to witchcraft help this lady i remove that demonic thing from your body now for the bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father i declare let it be uprooted now please hear me do you know that many attacks on your health is actually an attack on your finances it's not really the health it is the supplies 
be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name thank you please you can return to your seat just one last prayer and I'm done please someone can come and help me pack this request I want to pray over people here because the Lord is opening my eyes I'm not a prophet of doom but I'm seeing a casket like a coffin and the Lord is saying I should rebuke the spirit of death do you know let me tell you there is a spirit that has been released across this nation you have to pray you see people just dying anyhow people don't die anyhow oh uh -uh. death where is your sting and no grave where is your victory the devil want to just come and waste the lives of people just like that I want to pray for you and this extends for you and also your loved ones right now anyone here who is a victim or there is an operation of the spirit of death around your life my god I'm, I'm just sensing like fire leaving my hands lord i don't know where they are help them please in the name of jesus i declare by the spirit of life and even by the mercy of god be delivered from death now whether by accident by the sword by sicknesses be delivered from death now and if there is any stranger roaming around your body in the name of a sickness or a terminal disease whether cancer whether hepatitis whether blood condition please in one minute rebuke it in one minute rebuke it I declare my liberty by the mercy of God in the name of Jesus now I speak over your life that in the name of Jesus beginning from now a dimension of God's mercy you have not seen may it begin to work for you mercy in your finances mess in your spiritual life in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ 